Hey everyone, uh, I'm Ozaris and you are watching the Tyria Weekly. Today I'm joined by a very special guest. He flew all the way from Thailand. Uh, it's Mr. <laughs> Cheese. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, hello. Mm, normally hanging out in Thailand, yeah. <laughs> Taking it easy, being rich, all that stuff, right? You can so see that you're not from Denmark or any other Scandinavian country. <laughs> so. It doesn't look very Scandinavian, does it? So, uh, what's up? Uh, yeah, what's up? Uh, not much as per usual. Oh, uh, Diablo 3 is what's up, actually. Diablo 3? <laughs> what is that? I've never heard about that before. Oh, shut up, Ozzy. Hmm. We, we, spent, we spent at least two hours trying to log into the game the other night. Yes. So I'm pretty sure. I don't know if you have played it, but you have at least tried to play it. You shall watch the video that I made. <laughs> I shall link yeah. it in the description, and you you will watch it. That was that was kind of the feeling you were getting, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, we have we also have a video of us thirty minutes just having fun about <laughs> what's wrong yeah. with this picture, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of to be expected that the launch was going would go that way, I guess. But at the same time, also kind of disappointing because you know it's not like an MMO or anything. It's it's more like a single player like multiplayer yeah. so why why have those issues but especially I mean, since they know that like how many people pre-ordered at least one million from the annual pads and then another million two million at least for pre-orders normally so yeah i guess that that might even be i haven't seen any numbers yet but i guess they'll be rolling out over the next couple of weeks or so when things have settled a bit but but yeah it's just a it's to be expected when they go with the system they've chosen to go uh, by but seriously but yeah. why? Where's where's the single where's the single player part of the game? Where is the the option to go offline and play on my own character, just to play the game and instead of be stuck in some queue? I mean, it it's been it's been well, the main topic of the last couple of days I guess on the internet. But it's unnecessary not to have the the offline part of the game. I mean, it's completely fair that you can't. Use offline characters online and the other way around, for that matter. It's all it's all fine, but just have the option to play DRM, so man, DRM. Yeah, exactly. People uh, people complain about it all the time when Ubisoft launches yet another game with DRM on it, but <sighs> Blizzard does it as well. Uh, but but it hasn't. I mean, it's not like it has gone unnoticed. Diablo is just such a good game that many cho uh, choose to buy it anyways. Yeah, and, and ignore it a little bit, I guess. A little bit, but I wouldn't say it's been ignored from what I can tell. I mean, I've seen a ton of places complain about it, especially because the launch has been such a big problem. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's been brought up again. It's been brought up in the past. I'd admit that perhaps not as much as, as Ubisoft, but I think it's because Ubisoft does it does more often, you know. They tie it to more or less every single game they release, and... Uh, so it is kind of a big issue there. I mean, Blizzard have uh, have had to, well StarCraft, but as far as I remember, you can play StarCraft offline, right? Another is Diablo. I've been World of Warcraft for a long time, but of course you have to be online to play World of Warcraft. That's part of the concept. So I, I think it's it it might be be because it simply happens more often with Ubisoft, and perhaps it's also because Ubisoft you don't really get anything. I mean. In in uh, Diablo, you at least so your characters are stored online and your settings and all that stuff is stored online and is always available to you from whatever computer you choose to play from. So there is stuff like that, and a huge part of the of the Diablo experience is of course playing it together with your friends, and they've done a ton of stuff to make that easy. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've been playing together a bit, right? And it's just so oh, I'm yeah. sitting in a game, you log in, you press on, on me more or less, you're in my game. Seamlessly, you... seamlessly. Yeah, yeah exactly. it goes really nice. It's, it works. It works very well. And, and very well. the difficulty just scales uh, on the fly with the, with the amount of players in one game. Hmm. So I'd say you get more in Diablo than you do in, in, in some of Ubisoft's games, where it's just been, well, you have to log in and be online at all times to play the single player experience, which is only single player experience. And the game, games are usually not that good, so it just becomes extra annoying as well. So. Exactly. So, but I still say Diablo 3 should have launched with an offline mode. It's just, yeah. That's just the way of it. And I don't think it should have had that much problems either with uh, the, the servers. 
I mean, yeah, it would probably even have been a way to like take some of the weight of the servers on, on the launch day because people just gone, oh, I'll just I'll just play offline. It's fine. You know, it's not fine, but then I'll go, then I'll go make a character offline. Perhaps some some guys would probably even do that anyways. I mean, if if you're not necessarily going to play with your friends and stuff, you might as well have a character offline. Uh, so yeah. yeah, should have been a feature. But. So uh, I was going to ask you what have you done this week, but I guess Diablo three is one of those things. And well, the usual usual school work, you know. Uh, yeah. That that's kind of regular. That's kind of boring. But we are getting kind of close to those exams and want to get those out of the way so I can yeah take two two month off just doing nothing, not having to worry about. Go to a wonderful uh, Norway. Yes, exactly. Two weeks hiking in Norway. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Um. Today was seventeenth of May. For people who are watching this today, when we film this, is 17th of May, and it's the Norwegian national holiday, and that's why I have this flag here. And <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even Norwegian by by birth. Uh, I've lived here for a couple of years, but that's it. But Norwegians are very nationalistic. They dress up, go outside, big ass parades and fairs and all that shit. So been outside and been doing that, and that was that was kind of fun, but exhausting. But yeah, <laughs> that's what I've been doing today, and for the rest, pretty much just Diablo, and of course uh, the stress test on Monday, Guild Wars 2. Right, right. Which uh, we'll talk a bit later. Um, let's talk a little about general news. Um, yeah. So well, we had the Diablo thing, uh, of course. Uh, l- let me just first s- tell news. everyone what 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 we're gonna talk about today. So first, we're you gonna go discover ahead. cover some general news uh, and then we're going to talk a bit about the badass stress test and then we're going to talk about conserving names uh, talk about crafting uh, the gem store and of course the profession of the week which will be the guardian yeah yes. so that's that's in store this week uh, but yeah the Diablo 3 came out Monday that was on well, we saw we talked about that. Another thing that came out two days ago is Max Payne 3. Mm-hmm. At least on oh. consoles. On console and in North America. Yeah. Blood matter. So we have we have a little subset of gamers who are currently enjoying uh, the hell out of Max Payne 3. I hope uh, I haven't seen any reviews yet. And then we have the rest of us, which I heard. I heard some stuff. Uh, Max Payne 3 is pretty good, but if you're gonna expect exactly same as the first two then you're going to be disappointed because it's very much rockstar flavor to it it's like a mix of like grand theft auto but also you know they did change the storytelling it's not as over the top as grand theft auto but it's still like it could be a grand theft auto world yeah. but they they still yeah. max Payne is still a really good character from what i heard but you, you don't see the strips in between and stuff like that and no weird scenes or levels with where you follow a bloodline to a crying baby or something <laughs> like that. That was actually one of the awesome parts in the first game. I though. was pretty young playing the game then. It was actually pretty scary to play those things, <laughs> yeah, I must was. admit. <laughs> but at the same time, pretty then awesome as well. Lots of blood, could hear the baby crying. Uh, I think it was like a heart pumping or something, right? Yeah, when you got closer. It was actually, it took me a while to complete those usually. Yeah, I, I was writing an assignment about um, about Max Payne one, and so I went back to to uh, try and play it again. Who made that it, game? Was it Remedy? Yeah, I think so. I'm actually almost uh, sure it uh, it is. But it's just it, that that still a great game and it's a great storyline, mm. and I had a lot of fun with it. And uh, that those um, nightmares, uh, you know, level still works, and it's. Interesting to see how they're always being um, influenced by what you have been doing before, right? In out in the world or uh, in, yeah. in your previous yeah. adventures or whatever. Right? Then, then you'll see. Okay, so there's some of this stuff from that that level or whatever. Yeah, uh, I actually, you know, th- there's games. Uh, actually, you know, remember getting that game and just playing it, and it was such a step forward from anything I've played before, like the bullet time and the whole story and stuff like that like nothing I've really played before that that was like that immersive that brought you into the yeah. game it's just really good so I'm, but I'm, I'm uh, it's coming out on PC the 27th did I just read that or 29th uh, what was it 29th I think right it's bloody oh I could I could 
The wow. multiplayer actually looks pretty decent in that as well. So. Uh, yeah, they're bringing a, what's it called a bullet time to a multiplayer now mm -hmm. for the first time. Mm. Should be interesting. Should be very. Uh, interesting. Did you hear hear anything about that? No. No. So, I've, okay, I've seen a uh, uh, quick look on giantbomb.com, uh, but they played single player and that's it. So. Okay. I haven't I haven't spent that much time looking at it either because. I don't know. It makes the, the two so the two previous McFans have been all about the the single player, and so I don't have that big expectation for the multiplayer. And to be honest, Max Payne is not one of the game that I would be playing for the multiplayer. Like that's not what I'm thinking. When I'm thinking Max Payne, I'm thinking awesome action, awesome uh, Story. storytelling, single player stuff yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Uh, and it seems like the action is going to be awesome, and the animations and all that is over the top. That's all great. Lots uh, of I'm not lots I'm not of thinking multiplayer. Kill cam kill camps in that game. Uh, Whenever you kill the last person in the room, uh, you will follow the bullet, and you can like, you zoom in on the the dude that you're shooting, and you can mm. keep shooting it in that slow mo, like, and you see like all the blood splatter from the face. It's kind of <laughs> gory, but it's kind of cool. So yeah, it got it got an R R rating, I guess. I don't know. I think it in Denmark what does it's R rated, mean? Uh, Restricted. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Mature. Um, no. So yeah. in Denmark, it's it's gotten a, a a plus eighteen rating, I think. Yeah. So eighteen years and, and above. It's I guess it's kind of violent, to say the least. Uh, but it's it's one of the game I'll have to try rather soon. Uh, though my schedule is kind of full right now, so I think that'll be one of the you know holiday but games. But you know, I'm not that interested in the I mean, multiplayer, so I'll, it doesn't really matter if I play it at launch or a month later or three months later or something like that. I'll just yeah, not, not not the multiplayer. I'll agree on that. Uh, I'll probably try it when I get the game, just to see what it's like, and uh, especially if I like the single player part. But that Max Payne is a game I buy for the single player experience. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so. more news. Uh, Rift is gonna have a streaming client, which means that you'll be able to download while you play, just like World of Warcraft. And uh, I think this is good. People can say, you know, wow, ripoff, but this is probably one of the best features that has come to yeah. any type of game, online game, MMORPG, since whenever. So uh, why not just adapt that? And I think that's a good thing. Really. It's, yeah, it's absolutely one of the best technical features that's been added. I mean, it's just the, the games are growing so huge by now, right? I mean, my WoW folder is, let me just see, it is insane. Um, it is 25, 25 gigabyte. Of course, some of that is screenshots and whatnot of of, of things that I have kind of added over the years. Mm. But 25 gigabytes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's big. That is a lot you'd have to download to be in order to play, right? Mm. So yes, 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 yes. Give us those features so I can just so just download whatever I need to be able to play and then just download while I play. Great. Yeah. You need okay. to have a certain type of connection able to do that, though. By the way, like a five Mbit or something minimal, four Mbit. I can't remember. Mm. But yeah, okay, almost that's called, almost that's everyone has good. that download speed, so that shouldn't be a big issue. In in many places, it's it's normal, yeah, but not not. Bad, right? Oh but no! Yeah, oh no! That's that that it. I mean, streaming client is probably will probably also be extremely annoying if you, <laughs> I mean, if you don't have the connection to like keep up with what you're doing. Uh, so I guess it's alright to have some kind of restriction on it. Yeah. It is a good service at least. So. Then some more news this week. Uh, PvP. PvPvP. Yes, exactly. Good. <laughs> Which uh, Rift is going to implement in a patch, I believe. It's not even a, an expansion or anything. Uh, but yeah, they talk about all kinds of stuff in this. Uh, I'll, we'll give links to everything that we show here in our description so you can read it yourself. But they just... Uh, Conquest pits three new cross-dimensional factions against each other in open-world battles where everyone can contribute. Even crafter, crafters play a vital role, apparently. Uh, so basically you pick a side, venture over to Stillmore, which is an area in... in... Uh, uh, in that world, what is, I can't remember what the world is <laughs> called now, Jesus Christ. Uh, and to join impressive multi-facilitated multi three-way frame. 
So that sounds interesting. I guess that they take that from Guild Wars. I see that it's a good idea, and they try to adapt it. I think that's also very, very good. Yeah. Uh, it because surprises me that that it hasn't been done before. Feature. Yeah, I know, right? Because uh, it has been proven to be fun and, and works really well. Like Dark Age of Camelot, a lot of people, you know, played that game just for that reason. So mm -hmm. it's taken such a long time for that to be picked up again. It's kind of yeah. kind of odd. Kind of weird. But now it's now it's suddenly you know. So we have it in in Guild Wars two and. Now we it suddenly starts to creep into into Rift, and we have um, what's it called? Something online. Surprise, surprise. Uh, Morrowind, the Elder Scroll Online, right? What? No. Yeah, Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah, but they, they also have three now, factions. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but that's I, actually that's there are differences though because this is like you will still have two factions in Rift, but you can join a team or you get put in a team, I'm not sure quite sure how it works, and then put against the other teams, whereas in Guild Wars it's server versus server versus server, and in Dark Age of Camelot it's fa faction versus faction versus faction, and it will be like that in Elder Scrolls Online as well, it'll be faction against faction against yeah, faction. That's, and not, not that's true. So, uh, But the whole concept, and I really hope it, it works out, I mean we haven't, we, we, have, we have tried uh, what was well two times in Guild Wars 2 right now, and that that's just not enough to be able to make any conclusions. I think in in both the times we tried it, one team was quite a bit in front of the other two. The second impression we did was actually pretty balanced, uh, as far as I saw. It was better, but I still think one of the team were, had a, had a pretty good lead. I'm not sure, but it's also I hard mean, to say. I mean, it's like a stress test, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's not enough time to, and the community needs to learn how to play it yeah they need to learn so okay this team is in front that's of course that means we're going to knock on their door because and and the servers need to balance themselves against each other because some some servers will just be more active on pvp than other servers so exactly yeah but so I, I think in guild wars time. 2 it will i can almost guarantee that, that at some point that will be it will be really good in the beginning you might get owned really hard or you'll own really hard but that doesn't mean that, that the next reset you suddenly own as well because you'll be placed against a higher ranked server so exactly and it's it's a cool idea to have this that every server uh, so or that all servers are in this form of ladder system in some way that where you're getting uh, balanced all the time and at the same time you have a three faction system so if all servers are are kind of equal if scale if we could just say it like that mm -hmm. then the three faction system should work very well because all servers should go to you know uh, play properly and should know how to go for the <laughs> go for the strongest server. I mean, so so yeah. That, yeah. Uh, that, totally. that should work out. Yeah, and I think it's good that like the key games adapting this from each other, like World of Warcraft adding PvP scenario or PvE scenarios, which is kind of like like because they, they don't use the Holy Trinity system in that, so they're kind of like taking that mm -hmm. from Guild Wars and. Rift is taking streaming client and, and and I think it's good because it keeps the competition fresh because World of Warcraft has been sitting on that lazy ass trend for such a long time now that it's not good. They need yeah, some no, competition it's, in it's order true. for it to stay fresh and you see that with Mess and Panaria they've got a lot of you know good ideas to improve the game and hopefully I mean, for them that it will work. World of Warcraft have been extremely polished and have had a lot of, you know, upfront features which have been the first to implement a lot of features, at least implement them very, very well. Uh, and in a very, uh, you know, yeah, well developed manner. So, mm -hmm. so they've kind of had this position, but uh, and we've seen some games like Rift trying with the dynamic event stuff and uh, try to do some things, but it's just, it's besides from the dynamic events, as far as I can tell, I haven't played Rich, uh, Rift a lot, but as far as I can tell, it's it's actually very similar to to WoW, really similar, right? You have played it, so you should be able to. Yeah, Rift is basically just you quest, uh, and then you gear up in instances and do dungeons for PvE-wise, and then you have PvP where you sign up for battlegrounds and all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much WoW. The only thing that they did was we added they added rifts in between, and and they are dynamic, but they're also very repetitive because those world events inside the zone or zone events will happen every time and it's it's not really like it changes any, anything it just like gets looped constantly but it, it is a pretty good concept but it is just they didn't I didn't don't think they went far enough with the dynamicness of their game because you are still 
when you're done doing with invasion, rifts will still spawn like really rarely, like one top right corner, top, top left corner, but you're questing in between, and it just feels really, uh, to me, it felt kind of. It was a really refreshing experience, but in the end, it was kind of meh. They should have gone like what Guild Wars 2 is doing, where everything is dynamic. But I guess uh, they didn't yeah, dare to take that step. Exactly, that's then the case that now uh, Guild Wars 2 comes in and actually tries to uh, do a lot of things differently at the same time. So we're not just having the system where, well, we got this game, which is kind of, of, of wow in many respects, but are doing one thing differently. So, I mean, mm. you probably need a, to do a lot differently and do it well in order to actually uh, convince a great amount of players to move on. And it, it's hard to say if people move on at all, because, at all, because it, to me it seems like Guild Wars will be somewhat casual in many respects. Um, yeah. And and it's and you, you you know it doesn't require a monthly fee or anything, so you can easily have it running besides any other subscription you might have, yeah. uh, which I think actually is a is a very good feature because it's it's a problem that there's more good games out there and they kind of try to starve off each other um, by by taking the customers who are willing to pay uh, pay for the subscription. Uh, and yeah, at least uh, at least Guild Wars 2 doesn't try to fit into that position. No, what Guild Wars 2 just does is like. You know, this is what we think is wrong with MMOs, and we're gonna change everything. And like pretty much everything that we know about games or MMOs is pretty much different. I mean, in some way they work the same, but they're just slightly different. So different enough to make it different, rather than whereas Rift, it's pretty much the same. It looks different, but it is the same. If you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. Other news is uh, la last news exactly. Dota. Dota. So okay, the case is I think most people probably heard about it that uh, <coughs> Valve, which is one of the absolute best uh, you know PC only companies out there, uh, hired the guy Icebrock who were making the original Dota and he got to work on a new Dota game but instead of like going with the uh, League of Legends or Heroes of New Earth or whatever, he they chose the name Dota 2 for the game, and <laughs> that is a false problematic. Blizzard got mad. Blizzard got mad. I mean, the, Dota has always been a name which has been you know related to uh, Warcraft 3 and uh, the the mod uh, Dota, right? Mm -hmm. Defense of the Ancients. So using Dota, t I mean, they they were under the impression that they at least had the copyright for the name or that that the name was so tied with the uh, with Warcraft the Warcraft franchise that uh, Wave didn't, couldn't just use it so anyways they went to court and they have now solved it in a very peaceful manner I'll say so um Vail yeah. is being allowed to use the name uh, Dota 2 for the game yeah yeah they Blizzard was actually generally pretty generous with that they just said you know you, you can have it and we'll just name our game Blizzard uh, Blizzard uh yeah, Blizzard All Stars. Blizzard, Blizzard yeah, All Blizzard All Stars. All -Stars. Yeah. I'm correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly, and so that's all fine. I mean, I I don't know what there must be have been something going on behind the scenes, you know, because I'd actually think that Blizzard had the better case here. Uh, to be honest, I think they were just basically mad that they did it behind their back, that they didn't ask like, "Hey, is that okay?" We just yeah. do it anyway. It's also kind of odd, but I'm glad to see, you know, the the two what I've called some of the best developers for for PC, you know, agreeing and kind of kind of fast and agreeing in a nice way. There was no mud throwing. There was no, you know, anything going on. And it's, as it's, far as I can tell. But Blizzard All Stars is already a known name as well, right? Because then wasn't it? Used to be called something like that as well, All Stars, or that was. The it's Dota All Stars, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. And then they put just put Blizzard in front of it, which I mean, everyone who knows Blizzard will know that game, so it's not a big issue for them, I guess. So. Exactly. Um, and I also think they made another agreement somewhere. I'm not sure I can find it now. Uh, I think it, it was part of the terms that that the community could use the Dota name or something without being sued for it, that it would be kind of open to the community. But yeah. I'm not sure I can... Find it. Yeah. I think there was something about that, which was actually one of the things that really I, I thought was awesome. Hmm. Uh, but, yeah. Now I can't seem to find it. But but that's all fine. 
Uh, it's all fine. Let's move on to some Guild Wars 2 related news. Yeah, <laughs> about time. So, there was this woman. I have her blog here. Uh, I can't remember what she's called now. Kelly something? She uh, used to be a Guild Wars 1 player. And one day she decided, like, you know, why can't I do something epic in, in real life, an epic quest? And she just decided, you know... I'm going to go cross, cross country and go on an adventure with my dog on foot. And so she she walked from the east coast to the west coast of the states, which takes quite a while uh, <laughs> uh, by foot. Uh, but she made it and uh, apparently uh, she got invited to Arena Nets and um, they made a character out of her. And she's in Guild Wars 2 uh, walking around with an in-game dog. Here, well, yeah, is. which is a kind of a you know, sh like her dog, I guess. Yeah. Does, doesn't look I exactly like it, but uh, no. But then it's just based on her. Like this, yeah, this, it is. this NPC it is. will walk randomly in interior, and you can ask her questions, and she'll tell you about the world and why she's doing it and stuff like that, which I think is really really cool. It's it's it was actually a very nice story, you know. Yeah. Uh, that. So okay, she she did something pretty awesome and went out in the world and and met players. I mean, I think I'm not even sure. I think one of her reasons was that you know you do this all the time in in role playing games. You just went out into the world and you just help people out. Yeah. Uh, why don't people do that in in the real world? Actually, they, she made a video of it, didn't she? Uh. I'm almost. I don't that, know. That, that, yeah, what, whatever you are. That, this is this is another woman that did that though. Oh, she, okay, never mind. Then. She was on red and. Uh, or what is what the fuck is that side called again? Uh, Ted. Uh, Ted. Why did I say Ted red? Talk? I don't know. Yeah, she, so. <laughs> she made a video about uh, gaming can make a better world, which is I will yeah, link okay. that in the description as well. Everyone that is a gamer must it watch that because it's it's, video, it's, so. it's really interesting. Indeed. Yeah. Um. But it, it's a nice story, and I think it's it's also cool to like get some insight into some of the personal stories that are behind stuff in the game. Yeah. Uh, it always gives you a bit, give it a bit more of a, a personal touch, if you will. Definitely. So last Monday was a stress test. Uh, we, yeah. We played a bit, a couple uh, like an hour, or some hour or two or something like that. We yeah. shot some vids. We played some uh, World v Worlds, which uh, we have a second impression on. You probably already watched if you're watching this video. Uh, but we also did some uh, structured PvP, which is the 5v5 matches, uh, ranked matches, and then you can also go up to 10 versus 10 for for fun. Uh, yep. But we tried that. We didn't get in the same team because it was kind of overwhelming how did everything worked. I couldn't really uh, find out how everything worked, so we just like joined a random game and we played some uh, apart from each other and I actually uh, I actually kind of enjoyed it it was uh, pretty good I don't know what you uh, thought of that uh, firstly I didn't enjoy the fact that we for some reason couldn't play together we tried no to find I, I'm sure that either we missed something or or that will be added I'm pretty sure yeah I haven't been able to I've tried to like poke uh, I read that a couple of times. I haven't been able to get a reply, whether or not that is intended. What? But you didn't get a reply. I didn't Fuck get this a reply, shit. man. Seriously, yeah. I'm gone. No. Uh, no, no respect, you know. No. But um, yeah. So, so we there was a they, they have like a server list, and you can well click on the server and click join. So in that way, you should be able to play together. But the feature was sadly broken during the stress test, so you weren't able to actually select a, a server. You could just press on, on play now button and then you get right into a game which is all fine that worked very smooth uh, yeah. as well but but we weren't able to play together and that I don't know it kind of ruined the fun for me because I didn't have that good a time I was uh, having uh, some some difficulties getting to back into the character mm -hmm. I was trying to play more of a supportive role but you know when, when you go into so the way it works when you're going into uh, a 5v5 match or 8v8 or whatever you're going into um, you're going to what's called the mist, which is kind of some uh, interplane thing or some place between worlds or s something. But you're going, you're getting to levels, uh, your max level when you're in that place, and you're unlocking all your abilities and all your skills, like if you're a max level. So that means that from being level what 16, 17, 
I suddenly, I was suddenly level, uh, what's it, 80. 60? 80? 80. 80. I was suddenly level 80, and I had all these skills, and I was just like, whoa, sh I had to read through them, and I, I mean, I had, a hard, uh, I had a hard time just remembering the weapon skills, which I've actually been using back in the beta, but, mm -hmm. so it was a bit overwhelming, and trying to, you know, figure out which, which abilities I had, and which would, uh, working all right, and then we ended up in a, for a fairly small scale PvP, so my, um, my support role didn't really play out the way I wanted to and stuff like that, so... No, no uh, I, I thought that uh, as well, it was actually pretty overwhelming. Uh, actually, one of the first things when I started playing Distress Test, I logged into my warrior and I started killing some mobs and I actually almost died because I just f totally forgot how to play, like the dodge and <laughs> my, yeah. all my abilities are just like shit, but oh, that one was the slow, oh yeah, and that one was the, the blind, oh yeah, okay, okay. And after a while I got into it again, but it, it actually took me a while to get, get used to it. But indeed, the that you get all your skills, like all the utility skills and your trade lines, and ooh, man, that is a lot to take in. And uh, You know, I, I thought yeah. about that's a nice feature to learn to play your class, but if you want to use it that way, you at least have to play several days in order to start to know everything, because, yeah. It's yeah, overwhelming. It, it, it is very overwhelming. I think the current way it works, where you you um, gather skill points and then spend them, uh, works better because it means that you will you'll get to know the your well your previous set of skill points when you unlock something new. Uh, so it, it comes at a much more steady rate yeah. when when you just level. Uh, so I don't know. I can't, I can't really decide. I think that the scaling people up to max level is, is fine if you're going to play together with friends or if you know have been into the game for a while and you at least know a lot about how the system works then it, it may be possible they made it, it may they made it entirely for the people who only want to pvp and just do that mm. okay but i should maybe they should have made an option where like it's from level ranges but you know i think i'll just level to 80 and then i'll start trash structures pvp yeah, level think. ranges also adds an, uh, a lot of problems with okay so this guy is level uh, 10 and this guy is level 15 if they're going to play together he'll probably stomp all over the poor level 10 you know mm -hmm. uh, so i guess it's an all right solution in some ways but I i'm just not sure i want to have all those skills available because if you just want to go into some pvp then it's it is kind of overwhelming uh, perhaps it's just a meta system where you don't... So you have your weapon skills because you always have those available. And you can probably select whatever weapon you want to because I'm sure people will have a favorite weapon. That will also be fine. And then your your extra, your, your utility skills will be more based on what you have already unlocked. So provided that you have unlocked like uh, five or you know enough to fill out your utility skill bar, then you could go with those. And, and then when you level, you can just choose to unlock only those skills that... Uh, uh, that you are using in PvP. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But I don't know. I, I think the skill points require you to go out in the world, so if you're only interested in PvP, then it, it may be too restrictive. Yeah, that's true. Um. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, thought yeah. the stress test was not stressful. I was pretty smooth. <laughs> I, had, I had some lag with uh, the structured PvP, but yeah, other than yeah. that, it it went smooth as hell. I did not, I did not get disconnected. Uh, I could log in immediately, and there were no login problems or anything. Uh, granted, there are people that had those problems, but I didn't. So. And we had a pretty good time running around the world as well, with a lot, a lot of people on the screen at the same time fighting some pretty big battles against. I think it was a bit better well. optimized this time uh, as well. But. It seems seems like it, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so. It looks good, looks good. and uh, I don't know. Do you think this uh, this stress test is any indication of things to come? Hint, hint. Oh man, I hope next weekend. Uh, not this weekend, obviously it's too late. But next weekend, maybe. They said they're trying once a month, but that's not guaranteed. So I'm hoping either next next week or the week after that, I guess, uh, in June. But. Uh, I don't know. They're keeping those dates very close. So yeah. yeah. But I reckon the end of the month could be doable for them. I don't know. We'll see. Soon, please. Just just soon. So, so uh, let's move on uh, to the next. Uh, Arena just released a blog post here. Uh, reserving your character name for Guild Wars 2. So people who've played Guild Wars and have an active account... Uh, 
whatever that means, really. Uh, did you read up about that? What it actually yeah, means well, to have well, an active account? What it means to have an active account in this case is so. What they're going to do is they want people who are playing Guild Wars One to be able to keep their names when they're moving over to Guild Wars Two, uh, which I I think is a is a neat idea, really. Um, so they're going to allow people to reserve names in the um, so you know that when people have pre-ordered the game, they'll be allowed to they'll get a I think it's a three days head start or something before everyone who has just pre-ordered it. Pre-purchased um, it. If you're pre-purchased it, yeah, you'll get a three days head start, and everybody else will start well three days later, obviously. Um, pre-order so gets one day, I think. One day. Yeah. Okay, seriously, I need to get my stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, everyone who's playing like before launch, they'll be able to reserve the name. And also, the, guy, the ones who are creating a character on launch day will be able to, you know, use one of their reserved names that they're playing on the same account. Yeah. Um, and, and the way, well, the way they'll check whether or not an account, a uh, Guild Wars 1 account is active, is simply just saying, so, if you've been locked in since the 1st of January 2012, you have an active account. And they will um, they'll make this this list of names um, a couple of weeks in advance before the release, so you can't just log in the day before. But I mean, if you log in now, if you have an active uh, well, if you have a Guild Wars One account and you have a name you want to use in Guild Wars Two, log in now, and then you're done. Then your name is is uh, you know reserved for you, uh, but only only until uh, launch day. The day after launch day, names will be open for everyone. So. Yeah. So, uh, what are you uh, doing? Are you going to try to find your CD key and activate your account uh, or fix your account so you can reserve a name or not bother with it? Oh, you mean, yeah, okay, yeah, I have a, I have a Guild Wars uh, 1 account that I'm not really... Yeah, me too, but I, I can't get into it and I don't have the CD key here or anything, so I think I'm just not going to bother. I mean, I'll just find another name. and. You can have spaces in between your names, so uh, so many options. Uh, it doesn't not really concern me all that much, yeah. honestly. That's, but it's that's a neat feature for it, for so. the original uh, Guild Wars players. It's very nice that they did that. I think it's a nice little uh, nod to the Guild Wars two player, uh, Guild Wars one players. Yeah. Um, so so uh, uh, yeah, but uh, let's talk a bit about crafting, shall we? Yeah. So I made a little video on it. Or I made a, I frapsed it um, in first beta weekend event. Uh, I, would, I didn't really do that much, but uh, I'll just leave this going in the background. So, so so many things to do in the first. Beta collecting weekend. materials in this game is rather cool. You basically just buy three items, uh, which is like a scythe, uh, uh, an axe, and a mind pick. Yep. And uh, based on that, based on the level of that item, I think, or something like that, you can ha you can harvest stuff up to a certain level, and otherwise you have to upgrade them to a better version. Uh, but apparently, resources are available to everyone. Uh, so if you see like a copper ore, you can go to it, and your friend can go to it, and 1600 other people can go do it and everyone can mine it at the same time because it's yeah. for you personally and I think that's brilliant um, but yeah that's collecting materials and everyone can do that you don't need to have any kind of uh, crafting uh, trade for that at all yep you can everyone can pick gather up those tools and material. gather yeah but you, you're not only I mean you don't you don't only like gather from uh, from uh, nodes around the world that's right you salvage things as well Yes, exactly. And uh, everyone can do that as well, with salvage exact. kits. Salvage kits brought from uh, vendors, and well, that just if you have an item that you don't, you can't use, or you don't want to use anymore, whatever, then you can salvage it into uh, well materials that you can use for crafting. Mm -hmm. And of course, the final thing is that you can also loot uh, materials from well, slain mobs. Of course. Uh, like like leather and stuff, you know. Uh, so this is yeah, this is pretty much the three ways to to get materials when you're out in the world. Uh, of course, there's also that you can purchase stuff from the from the trading post. And I mean, given given that uh, well, that players can gather materials for all crafting professions, but only allowed to have two of the crafting professions 
or not crafting professions because it's called disciplines in Guild Wars 2 because yeah. professions is what what you play your, the class yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay but yeah so so uh, I mean I think a lot of the materials you'll you'll need will probably be gathered from uh, through the trading post because you'll be gathering all kind of materials you'll end up with a ton of stuff that you can't use so <laughs> either you can share it with other uh, characters in your account which basically means you can you can put them in the bank. You have a special bank slot just for um, just for you know uh, crafting materials. Yeah. And that that uh, well bank tag is shared among all characters in your account. It's worth so noting that you can when you harvest like ore or something like that, you can right click the item in your backpack and then do uh, put in collectibles and collectibles is like your second bank tab. And it just automatically goes there without having to physically go to the bank, which I think is really brilliant. But uh, yeah, yeah, it it is really brilliant, especially because you are getting so much, so many things when you're around in the world. I mean, yeah, just just from looting, I was getting a ton of crafting materials. So uh, I didn't know about this feature by the way we were playing. So I was kind of like, oh man, my my inventory it's just uh, so much many things, and I can't use half of them because I don't have the profession to it. And, then you come out some well you can just right click it and go into your goes into your bank. At the same time at the same time though it was I, th I thought it was really cool because you can everything is like oh it's not useless I can just salvage that and oh materials and you know maybe on my other character I want to have the crafting trade and your your bank is uh, account bound like you said so it, it, it's I don't know it feels really well like everything is usable right. and seems kind of cool. I think it's a I think it's a really great feature that your bank is shared because uh, I'm all well when playing WoW at least always ending in this situation so ah oh man this, these materials I have to get it to this character that has tailoring but is that is that which, which character first is that what again? you do is uh, what you do so is like you farm something on your main and then you send it to your bank character because you have one level one that is specially <laughs> yeah. made just Hang to have all your to... shit uh, usually with like within a guild as well, so you have a guild bank available, and then you have to share between that, and then you have to like send it to the to the character that you want it to to be at, and it's it's really hard to keep track of that. Of course, there are add-ons to keep track of that kind of stuff, but the way this works is just yeah, you know, fixes yeah, that problem exactly. really really well. Yeah. Um. So so that <laughs> that is pretty cool. Uh. And and to be honest, I kind of I kind of dig the system that everybody are able to gather everything, partly because it makes sense. It also makes sense that you should be able to craft everything, I guess. But let's let's not go into that right now. So, but but it it, it seems fine that you could are able to gather everything, and because the nodes aren't shared in the world, you'll be able to get a lot of materials. And I also think there'll be a great way to get the trade posts going really fast. I mean, like the in-game auction house, which I think we'll be getting to later. Um, mm -hmm. But. Uh, but but then you'll have to you can sell a lot and when you sell a lot then you also have the gold to to buy a, a lot of stuff for your own crafting because I did I didn't spend that much time in the beta but my personal experience was that I was I wasn't having that many crafting materials compared to what I needed to level but I don't know if you had a different uh, view on that no no pretty much that but I I, I don't know um, the feeling I got from crafting uh, it's it's pretty familiar, but uh, they added just a few things that makes makes it really interesting. Uh, I'm just trying to look uh, up what all the different crafting professions are, because um, well, I totally did not write that somewhere. Uh, so the the crafting professions there is in the game, or the crafting we have to re disciplines. disciplines. Disciplines, disciplines, yeah. yeah Save with disciplines. Disciplines. Okay. Um, uh, there's uh, armor smithing, which is well, uh, armor smithing is making like the heavy armor. So they have uh, three different uh, profession types, if you will. They have the the soldier and here we go. Two, two other, right? So yeah, they have the armor smith for heavy armor, artificer for like magical items, staff, stuff, stuff like that, cooking for food, and food gives buffs. And sorry, actually, it's not called cooking; it's called chefs. Oh. Damn. Huntsmen to grants yeah. ranged weapons and short bows, pistols, rifles, jewelers for jewelry, leather workers for medium armor, tailors for light armor, and weaponsmith for melee weapons, yeah, as exactly. well as shields and spears. So you can choose two of these, 
and uh, crafts away. And it's cool because you can just choose two random ones. You don't need to think about, ooh, I want this one and then I need the other one because I need that gathering. No, you can get everything already, so choose whatever you want. Of course, it makes somewhat sense if you are, well, playing a Guardian, then you may want an armor smith. Like he yeah. heavy armor, yeah, armor smith. Um, so, but there should be enough to choose from, really. Mm -hmm. uh, to satisfy your needs, mm -hmm. uh, and actually, I found the I found the cooking profession to be kind of interesting because of with cooking you uh, you make well food, and food gives you buff. And let me just see if it's pretty hard it because sense. it's like real ingredients and stuff that they use, like uh, because I mean they're, they're using a ton of stuff. So they have like this. This is called a cheese triangle, and that's totally coincidental that it's <laughs> <laughs> cheese, but. So a ball of dough, cheese wedge, egg, and some uh, parsley leaf. Exactly, so it's like, like that's really things, realistic right? for just yeah. the thing. Yeah, that, I, I've read thing. some stuff about that. That you know, you need to know your cooking uh, in order to do that. And but the cool part is like I show in this vid, like here, um, arti artifact. No, uh, this is like discovery station. You can just randomly put three or more items in there, and you can find recipes that use those ingredients. And you know, uh, that's kind of that, that extra thing that you know makes the explorer and me happy because that they added that. Because uh, you know, of and course, it's, uh, of course, it, it. of course, at some point you will have lists on the internet with like, ooh, this and this and that and then that will make that, and you have like these huge files with all the combinations available. But in the beginning, it'll be fun to just try out yourself and like, ooh, I found a new recipe, and I don't know, I think that's pretty yeah. damn cool. As well. I never really got to test it because I simply didn't have enough materials to be able to no, like, me neither. experience with it. Me neither. Uh, but I think I think it's a cool idea, and if, if just if there just was some way to keep these lists off the internet, so you had to do it every time more or less. I, I may, maybe it get tedious, what? but it would kind of make make the crafting a bit more of an adventure because, yeah, as you say, in the end you'll be going to. Uh, whatever Guild War Two Champion dot com or something and yeah. Uh, and then you'll just be able to find this list. So. But what would it be cool, like, to not make these recipes droppable? They should make them like, if they add a new one, they should say, "Ooh, there's, you can craft a new weapon." But we're not going to tell you what you need for it. Yeah. You're like, "Oh, this this weapon you can craft," and then you sh you just need to figure out yourself what 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 the materials are going to be, and then you can suddenly make it. And I think that will be interesting if they're going to add stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that could be kind of cool. So, but I'm I'm looking forward to trying it out a bit more. Although, um, as far as I can tell, uh, crafting isn't the most interesting in this game either. I mean, mm. uh, it's so 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 it has uh, it has the discovery system and it gives XP and stuff as well when you're crafting. Uh, and you have this nice little feature that if you're if you're going to craft a, a lot of the same thing, like a lot of cover bars or something, uh, it will it will speed up the crafting. A lot. Uh, yeah. So it means that the first will be crafted at the, the first bar will be crafted at normal speed, and then the next bar will be crafted at some increased speed, and then the, the speed will just keep increasing until it's just because really fast. Yeah, yeah you're we, just we, we making touched those about, We bars, touched on I mean. the subject uh, last time, and I think that you know, brilliant. Yet again, a really good mm -hmm. feature. Uh, but besides from that, I'm a bit. Uh, it it sounds better than other crafting systems for sure. Uh, you gain XP bit, for it as well. Yeah, getting XP for it. It's a bit less static. There's things like if you make some kind of item level that you advance in multiple uh, disciplines, uh, they have the system that okay, you can co you can only have two di disciplines, but you can uh, drop a discipline and take up another discipline, um, which is all fine. But if you then choose to roll back to your, one of your previous disciplines, you'll have all the r recipes still. Yeah. Um, so, so exactly. in that way, it, it may be. I don't know how it will actually work out. If people will just be, you know, changing around their disciplines, or how they're going to do it, because you yeah, you can pretty pretty much max out everything and then the switch. But I guess it will cost a lot of money to switch at some point. But I wonder if that's if there'll be something in it for people. If that'll actually be a thing you want to do. Yeah, I, I'm not that kind of person that likes to do that. No, no. But if if, but if you're talking about you know min maxing, right? Then yeah, yeah. But I don't know how how important those professions are gonna really be because this game is already so not gear dependent. So yeah, but well, it's gonna there, be there's interesting. Gonna, there's gonna be some kind of uh, improvements to your gear and your weapons and stuff, as far as I can can understand. 
but I don't know if that will be uh, you know tied to a character or if if it's something you can craft and then sell. I, I'm guessing you can sell it, but mm. yeah, you can sell it, and it's it, it's also for looks. You can probably be able to craft some pretty good looking stuff. Yeah, and that would also make sense. Kind of be interesting. But I don't know if that's actually something that you, as the crafter, benefits from. I mean, if there's something like. Uh, because you have this discipline, you will be able to craft this item for yourself, or you will be able to get this this uh, extra benefit of whatever kind uh, that that, that all our characters want. Uh, yeah. I, I again, I don't think so, but. Mm. I don't, I will have to see with that, but uh, overall, it's a pretty solid design. Uh, they've made some minor improvements on traditional crafting systems like the speed up and discovery, so it's it's interesting enough to keep it fresh. So. No, for, no, for the, not that place uh, where Guild Wars 2 will set itself apart. No, 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 no. But I don't think crafting... Because so many people are not that much interested in crafting. Anyway. It's, it's this thing that belongs in MMORPGs, but it's not like a significant part of the game. I've never seen a game uh, where it's super significant. So, no, exactly. But that, that's why I, I'd actually like to see a system where it, it played a more significant role. Perhaps not something that... It, it doesn't have to be like... A, <laughs> like mandatory, but it would be nice to have a a game where crafting was a mu was a much bigger bigger part of the game if you wanted it to be. Yeah, instead of like monsters dropping loot or epic bosses dropping loot, instead of like make them drop materials that are being used for crafting. Instead. Something like that. Yeah, exactly. And where you would then actually have to uh, really level up your that crafting because it's very important for you that you uh, you're depending on being able to make your own gear or whatever. But also make the crafting more fun, of course, because just running around gathering that ore thing, melding it and then making this weapon or whatever, it's, it's of course not the most interesting thing, just clicking on a button and then suddenly your weapon is crafted. Yeah. Th then you also want a system that makes crafting more fun and exciting, so... Yeah. Uh, but I, I, sadly I don't have a solution for it, I just start to see someone do it. Yeah. So I guess that's pretty much what we know about uh, crafting for now. Um, I don't know. At this point, yeah. Yeah. That's how so our next uh, topic will be the gem store. Uh, the gem store that actually went live uh, again, I guess. Here, as you can see. Oh, mm, wait. Yeah, you got the video. That's and not entirely so, so what so I wanted. Have a, what? No, actually, that's I said that's not entirely how I wanted it. One second, I can fix it real quick. <laughs> Uh, but what you're seeing there um, is the the online gem store, which is not in any way in, in a functional state yeah. right now, but they're working on it, and it I don't know if it went up by accident. It's been up before, and it just went up the other day, so I shot this quick uh, video of it. It's, it's basically exactly the same as the in-game store. It has the same looks to it and everything. Okay, actually, the in-game one is prettier, but... Um, <laughs> this has a white background. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it has a white background. It doesn't... I mean, the, I don't think the buying mechanic works at all. I tried to buy some stuff, and it just seemed to ignore me. Um, so and, of course, I wasn't able to log into the game to actually see if I received those items I bought, so, yeah. Everything I've seen is not really game-changing. It's like outfit, bank portal... Uh, Dive yeah, pack, by the way, shares over your whole account when you enable them. Mm -hmm, nice. Uh, instant uh, repair, kind of nice karma, a little boost, experience boosts, and. I could imagine that the, the biggest Magic game boost. changer is, might might be the experience boost, although. Uh, well, levels doesn't matter that much in in Guild Wars 2, and it doesn't. I mean, there's no need to rush. To max level, uh, you know, just playing the game is <laughs> is the important part. Max level is not the important uh, part. This is kind of cool. I've never read this before. Kill streak experience. Th that is very cool. Yeah. Additional 100% for experience from kills, and then for 30 seconds, and it resets every time you kill something, so you can just like keep on going until it runs out. That's kind of. But you have to be insanely, uh, you know, active and fast because I've seen a lot of areas in the game where there isn't that many mobs to kill. So. No, it's true. You have to be very effective, but it, it's a cool idea, no doubt. Right, um, it's about fifty percent for one hour. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. They they have the extra uh, bank space, I think, and bank space. Yeah. You can unlock that might be the biggest feature that I can see right there. You know. Unlock bank slot. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Transmutation Stone also gonna be something that's gonna be bought a lot because uh, it, that's basically yeah, yeah. transmogrifying. But then you know, make make one of your current items look like an old item, but have has. Uh, but I think that's kind of cool because it's not like game breaking, but it's something people will buy. So if you support arena net by doing that. That's uh, that's a good choice. Yeah. That is Mystic Keys though. I have, there's like certain chests that need to be opened with this. This is maybe the only thing like that. You know. Yeah, I don't know much about it actually because no. so I, I think it's it's like um, things uh, chests that drop in the world and you you can only unlock through a key or you can buy at the gem store, but I don't know what it will contain. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna be like oh this well this is the chest that will contain the best items in the game, so you might want to get those keys. I, again, it will not be something like that, but I, I have no idea how powerful uh, items or whatever you'll find in those chests. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I, I don't like that move that much. It, it's a bit like you know Team Fortress 2, where you play Team Fortress 2 and then suddenly you find you get this uh, uh, this uh, package or something, and uh, or this gift thing that you can only unlock by buying a certain item as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It just feels kind of bad to wow, I got this thing, but I now have to pay to unlock it, and I have no idea if I'll get anything good from it. It's just yeah. Yeah. But that's just I'm not a fan of. But the one thing is that you'll be able to earn everything by in-game gold as well because there are trading posts in-game where you can trade gold for gems and gems for gold. Yeah. That is a good thing then because that's, that's that means good. that you are not totally uh, isolated uh, from from getting these uh, these items if you don't want to spend real life money on it. No. Uh, so uh, and that seems to be working out uh, failure, right? So that means that of course, if if you wanna, if you wanna actually um, get some gold in the game, but you don't have a lot of time or stuff, then you can buy the gems and sell them, mm -hmm. and you'll receive in-game gold for it. And if you don't want to spend your your own real-life money on it, yeah, found some gold, buy some gems. Every, exactly. Everyone should be all as happy as well as the. And I, th I guess prices will probably balance themselves out, right? As people are. Uh, buying, selling, so yeah. hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll end at a position where everyone is, is kind of happy. Yeah, indeed. Uh, but so far, there's not. I mean, there's not much available yet. But so far, it looks pretty decent. I mean, uh, no, no, no pay to win bullshit, anything yet. And uh, yeah, I like it. But I also, like the store, it doesn't like it's not in your face all the time. It's like it is there, but you don't, you know, yeah. it never pops up or anything like that. Oh god, yeah, what was that? <laughs> uh, EverQuest Warhammer. And Warhammer Online and stuff like that, yeah. Wow, look at the stall we have! Oh, <laughs> In the middle of my okay. PvP oh, battle, god, what the fuck? The <laughs> yeah, oh, you're doing exactly. a siege, siege battle here! <laughs> you, you probably want to check out our store right now! <laughs> no, it's okay. no I, please. <laughs> yeah. Alright, uh, but... but um, I was going to say something, and now I totally forgot it because we started on this shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't uh, you, know. You carry on. But no, uh, wait. Yeah, the, the blog post they made. Sorry. Right. It just came to me. Uh, so they, they've actually made a blog post about this microtransaction system, and they have said that they don't want players to buy power. It is not a cool system where you have to invest your <laughs> your own money in in buying the best weapons or whatever in the game. That's just not cool. Yes, that that blog post exactly. Yeah. Uh, wor worth a read actually because it says a lot about their uh, philosophy so of course we have a link down there somewhere somewhere between all the other links dilly, 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 dilly. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, uh, bad references <laughs> yeah but the uh, profession of the week is the guardian the guardian Guardians specialize in protective and defensive magic. A deep sense of loyalty to their allies fuels their passion and power. A soldier profession, Guardians wear heavy armor. Yeah, that, that sounds like me. That sounds That's like totally me, you know? Yes. A deep sense of loyalty to their allies. Yeah, so, uh, that's so this is the Guardian. Uh... First of all... Oh wait, I can show off the weapons that they will be using. Which is can be shown here. Yep. Uh, Not that many combinations. Ah, uh, well, total weapons okay, eleven. 
Total <laughs> combinations yeah. 14, so it's not... Actually, the second highest. <laughs> yeah, Warrior is insane, but... Uh, it's pretty nice, it's pretty good. And uh, uh, what you'll probably notice is that there isn't, there isn't that damage orientated. Um, no, it's very... Um, well, you can, so I mean... You still have these straight lines where you can be more of a offensive character, but that's, your, abil that's... your abilities are generally like about buffing people and protecting people rather than yeah, very much about protecting. Um, so you have you have the great sword and the hammer, which is well a two hand sword and a two hand mace. Those two are damage orientated. The rest not so much actually. Um, and you don't have any kind of well the staff is slightly ranged weapon, but not not a lot really. Uh, and you don't have like uh, pistols or or bows or anything like that, so you are you are actually pretty restricted to being a support Scept character. Scepter is pretty offensive. Uh, but I don't think you can use uh... scepter. Yeah, you can. Right here, I'm showing you. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong screen. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. Why is this bugging out? No, oh, there we go. Um, but yeah, I I found them to well <laughs> suit the description very very well actually. Uh, they have a ton of uh, utility and defensive abilities that we can use to, uh, you know, grant boons to uh, your allies, remove conditions from your allies, all that stuff. Uh, you can put down some crazy shields to protect people, and uh, it was it was pretty nice. Put up some barriers that reflect uh, you know projectiles. So, Seven an arcane that, hammer that to defend you. Through. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, that's one of the things you have. You have these uh, these hammers, or not hammers in particular. It's spirit weapons, and spirit weapons is well uh, a floating weapon that will, uh, that that can help you on the battlefield. And, and most of them, I think, is like are actually damage orientated. Interesting elite um, skill locks you into place, but grants you powerful support spells. Hmm. Not only that, also give you a shitload of extra uh, extra HP. I tried it doing the stress test actually. Um, hmm. And well, yeah, you stand in place, you can't move, but you have some pretty powerful abilities. Uh, and it's it's kind of crazy because you have this one ability that suddenly grants you, I think it's a, at least five new abilities you can use. So it's just like I I, I tried to use it in there. It's just like wait, oh god, now I have five new abilities to learn as well, and I have like. Uh, I don't know how long it lasts, 30 seconds or something, to, to <laughs> learn them. Yeah, so it was the, a bit the most distinctive is this, uh, I mean, it's not only like a defensive type character, but uh, these virtues are like very unique to the class, right? You have these F keys that do that. And of course, the the stat that goes hand in hand with that is willpower. This is like the Guardian specific Oh god, yeah. what's it called again? Attribute. Attribute, yeah. Increases virtue recharge by 0%, so same as Elementalist, uh, it just recharges the, the cooldown. Which is pretty cool. Yep, yeah, and they're, they're very nice because they all uh, they all group oriented, uh, those abilities. Yeah. So, yeah, that the first one there makes your group uh, do more damage as a fire damage. The second one makes your... Um, uh, well, ages was so it's kind of a defensive uh, buff you can put down, and the last one increases your regeneration rate of your HP, which is pretty neat given that there isn't a lot of healing going on in Guild Wars 2. So, no. um, indeed, uh, but again, a lot, a lot of customization again, 12 different uh, major traits in every trade line, yeah, distinctive. Uh, Seems to be pretty. Well, you've been playing. What what uh, is your impression overall? In PvP, you had a bit of trouble on your own. I had a bit of trouble, uh, yeah. But I I think it's mostly because I um. So the 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 way I I played at least was I was I was trying to be kind of a, a melee support because you only have the staff as a ranged weapon. So, and when when I was playing the five uh, five versus five, I just I wasn't important enough, if you will. 
So at that part, I should probably have switched over to a two-handed weapon and, and done some damage instead because there just wasn't enough people to, to support. Lots of the abilities are kind of like uh, area abilities where you, you, you support multiple people, and that's just not as awesome as when there's just one guy fighting right beside you. Yeah, and, yeah. And then, I mean, your, your supportive role just doesn't change enough when there's only one guy and there's like three enemies, and you'd probably rather go some more offensive and try to help him out a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the World vs. World, it worked all right sometimes, but we had some fights where we were a bit outnumbered, and that meant that going into melee was insanely, uh, you know, uh, risky. Mm-hmm. So, so that meant that okay, I could go in and support, and I, I wasn't a very good player at that point at all. I still ain't. So, <laughs> um, but 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 it, it was just uh, very risky, and I, I would almost just get torn to pieces whenever I tried. Um, so I, I could probably imagine some more ranged utility would have been nice. But again, this is very much my first impression, and there's so many cool abilities that you'd have to learn how to use. So I'll admit that when I were out, uh, when I were out just on my own, I had, a, I had a great time with it. Um, mm-hmm. So that felt good. And felt good to have some some good weapons like the two-handed sword is actually a very good damage uh, uh, damage setup. Yeah. So I have yet to try the class. I really want to try it as well. Profession, sorry, but yeah, it looks very interesting. Uh, it has a uh, it's a bit more melee, but melee focused. But if I read the scepter skills and then the rare staff, then it has some range capability as well. So. Yeah, I'd say that the the main drawback of the class, the way I felt it was, that it was so melee on, orientated, and and so, so if you're in a situation where melee wasn't very good, which meant um, many of the world events actually, if you had like some big boss, being in melee range with him often means that you'll get uh, you'll get killed. It uh, I don't know, it felt like I didn't really have much of opportunities, but. Then again, if I learn to use to pick the right uh, utility skills, maybe I can actually be very good to have in melee range because then I can, yeah, put down some shields and knock enemies back and stuff like that, right? I put up uh, walls that they can't go through, and then just, uh, yeah, really, really have some kind of effect on the on the battle uh, anyway. But yeah. I'm a new by <laughs> <laughs> so annoying. But yeah, I'm. Um, mm. I don't know what I'm gonna do uh, at next Betty Week event. We're gonna start over, right? New characters. Yeah, I guess um, so. I do want to try Guardian at some point, but I don't think I will do it next time. Maybe. I'll I'll be trying something else than Guardian. It did it didn't sell itself completely to me, and well, <laughs> there's so many classes that I got I gotta try something else. Warrior is really enjoyable. Elemental is really enjoyable. Thief I would like to give another chance. But I think uh, I'll go with something like uh, a Mesmer or a Necromancer for next mm-hmm. time. That, that those seem pretty interesting. A Necromancer especially because that's one of the classes or professions that I'm least looking forward to. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why, it just doesn't appeal to me. But, you know, I'm probably get my mind blown when I try it. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It has happened once before, right? So yeah. I'm thinking Ranger because I don't like pet classes. So I want to try and no, exactly. Pet that's and that's probably the main reason do. why I don't like uh, Necromancer. But yeah, it's gonna uh, be hard because man, I th- really thought that I was gonna do Guardian first, and then I thought Thief, and then Elementalist, and Warrior, and now it's like oh, when that game goes live, I have no idea what I want to play first. I think God, but it's. <laughs> I mean, Arena Nets uh, stop oh, being great. so fucking awesome. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, you think it's a good thing when you when you want to play all the all the characters, all the um, professions, but no. Yeah. Apparently not. Mm-hmm. This is just go with the Warhammer style. One ranged uh, DPS, one melee DPS, one tank, one healer. Yeah. Job's done. Or like the secret world where you just make a character and be whatever you want to be. Hmm, right. Wow. Oh yeah, the secret worlds. Um, Beta weekend this weekend, and hopefully we have room. access. Yeah, may I make that? definitely want to try some of that because uh, we didn't get to play any last time because you suck and uh, because I suck. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I want to try that and hopefully Guild Wars 2 better weekend next weekend. Not this weekend, but next. Probably not, but maybe. Can I always hope, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all we'll do. We'll hope. 
I mean, it's definitely not a technical issue that should keep them from having those beta vegans. Uh, servers were running smooth. So also, how many beta we can still release? Do you think one more, two more? It's a good question. What one, they, two, when, I think. When will they release the game? I think that's the question. If you yeah, see the can't. stress test last time, it was pretty smooth. If next beta weekend event will be like without any problems, I think we'll see a release date pretty soon after. But is it is it only? I mean, are they only going to test the you know the, how the servers are performing? Are they also? I think they're also making making changes to the game, right? Balancing yes, out yes, stuff, uh, yes. funny bugs. So it depends on how how happy they are with the with that as well. Because yeah. to be honest. Yeah, if if the stress test and the beta weekend I have anything, you know, uh, to say, then the server seems to be doing a good job. Yeah. But but maybe that's something else. And we still we still haven't seen, you know, two of the races. Are they going to are they going to let players uh, try them out before? I have a feeling that they won't won't give us those. But because they were already playable at a at a Gamescom in 2011 or 10 or something like that. So. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, maybe perhaps they don't want to spoil everything for us. Uh, no, maybe but they also and they also have a ton of zones and all that stuff. So I guess it's it's a question of how how much testing they want yeah the community to do. So um, but but yeah I don't know I just I'd just be happy if they didn't release it before halfway through July. Yeah. Then I'm done with the exams. I'm back from hiking in Norway and I have at least one and a half month with nothing to do. Yeah. I guess we'll have to see. Uh, but. Uh, that's uh, that's it for today, I guess. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, yes. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and please subscribe and like our video if you liked it. Uh, give us input, questions, uh, whatever. We are uh, we are doing whatever we can to uh, provide as much well Guild Wars 2 content as possible. We have this Terrier Weekly, and whenever there's been some kind of event where we can get into play a bit, we will record videos and we will just release them as we go along. Um, so just this week we had. Uh, well, we had our second impression of World vs. World. We have a quick look at the gem store and the trading post that they work in game. Uh, a look at just some of the another video with some look at just some of the, the fun stuff you can do in Guild Wars 2. Uh, a, a fun way to get was it a skill point you got from it? Mm -hmm. From doing that, I mean. Yeah. So yeah, we're trying to have a steady stream of different videos coming out to you guys. Yeah, indeed. So go into our channel and uh, and have a look. Let us know what we what you think about it and. Indeed. Yeah. Thumbs up. Until next time. Thumbs up. <laughs> Bye. See you.